It's been said, if you want to get married, sow a seed. But God has sent Apostle Takim to tell us, if you want to get married, come into my manifest presence. It's been said, if things are not okay with you, it's your foundation that is responsible or some altars in your village. But God has sent his teaching prophet to tell us, if things are not okay with you, it is the foundation of the Lord that is missing in your life. The Cry of the Spirit Ministries in Nairobi presents Wherever the prophetic God and apostolic Christ. teaching ministry of Richard E. Esther King. Jesus. Now, follow us to the sanctuary. The Bible says a, a, a righteous man chooses his friend carefully. Why? Because of their destiny. You consider your destiny before you choose your friend. You consider your destiny before you choose the church you attend. You consider your destiny before you choose your pastor. You consider your destiny before you choose the teachings to hear. You consider your destiny before you respond to that text message that is seeking for your attention, seeking for a relationship with you. That person that I want to relate with you, please consider your destiny first before you respond. That person that I want to take you for lunch, hungry women always respond to stupid men that want to take them to, for lunch. Can't you cook at home? What will you eat when you get to that lunch? It will not be more than, if it's Kenya, chapati and other chatties. Or a cup of coffee. Can we have a coffee? Now, you go to have a coffee that will end you in a coffin. You have a coffee that will end your destiny in a coffin. And because you refuse to go out, they don't think that you are a cake. You are not civilized. Look at what the world do. They want to seduce you to your destruction. They will say you are not civilized. That's what they will say. Do you know that some wicked people call the Bible ancient books? They say it's an ancient book. So how can I be reading that those ancient dirty stories? Not knowing that this is their pathway for rescue. It's called the pride of life. Before you go out for coffee, consider your destiny. Before you collect that money, consider your destiny. Before you collect, you get, before you accept that job, consider your destiny. Before you accept that friend from the US who is disturbing you on social media, consider your destiny. Are you, are you, are you understanding this? Before desperate single women, before you accept that proposal, consider your destiny. Before you validate the speaking in tongues as a person is as, as salvation, consider your destiny. Listen, speaking in tongues does not mean the person is saved. Before you begin to validate people's salvation, I can't forget the lady I asked, is he saved? Yes, yes, he's saved. As if she's the one that gave Holy Ghost to mankind. Once the marriage alarm has been set on, you, you can even call the devil saved. Because he said, Libra I was watching the movie yesterday on Morning Cloud, the one I put around the, the Battle of the Mind. I was around 2 8. I've watched it over and over. I can't get tired watching of that movie. I, I, I look at that point where the man was pushing the, the lady to come and sleep with her. And, and she said, No. And the man then said, I want to satisfy your marriage, your marital desires. And she ended up sleeping with the lady. Do you remember the text message you sent to the lady? You see, I have reasoned over that text message over and over as if it was me it was sent to. I want to see why I'm reasoning over it because to see how I can help the ladies of our generation who have been deceived, the same pattern. Look at what the man, one, one part of his text message that make him look as if he's saved was, I promised God that I was going to marry a virgin. Can you imagine? Now, you made a promise to God and you are going to defy women. So a desperate woman would think, since he has made a promise to God, there are circumstances where predator men have met Christian ladies and tell and seduce them to the, to the sexual sin bed. When they got there, the men say, let's pray first. And the girl would tell you, because he said we should pray first, I thought it was God's will. 
The man will say, let's pray first that God will sanctify everything we are doing. Since we are going to get married, consider your destiny. Don't be religious. Religion destroys. Consider your destiny. If you're a serious minded Christian girl, consider your destiny. Don't allow religion to seduce you. Consider your destiny before you expect you accept that proposal. Consider your destiny before you go on a journey with that young man or that young woman. Consider your destiny before anything carry you away. Because your destiny is more important than anything on the face of the earth. Because by the evening of your life, you will see how stupid you were. There are a lot of people I've met that the enemy use pleasure to take them out of their path here. Most of them, we have prayed, we have fasted, we have done a lot. They can't come out of here. Because once you divert to this place, it's not prayer that will save you. Anybody who move, who move from their pathway that God has said to and get diverted to a pathway that is not theirs, prayer does not save them. I submit to you that many Christians who go to prayer on mountains, that is their problem. They married who they ought not to. And now in the preaching of marriage, they are trying to maintain marital standards on a marriage that have no valid foundation. As a result, they can't come out. They just have to remain there to die. How about those who just accept certain jobs? Some, not even marriage, just a relationship and they didn't drop a child in your, on your laps. That child that was dropped was all of you you are found here. For you to get back to track, prayer cannot take you back to track. It's the cross that will take you back to track. And here is the mystery. Who knows the cross? Many don't know. How many preachers can preach the cross? Until the cross is preached, you won't know which cross to carry and get back on track. It is not prayer that will help you to get back on track. It's the cross. It's the cross. You must carry a cross and follow Jesus. That is why don't even lose the track. Is somebody hearing me? Don't even lose the track. In this regard, prevent, don't, prevention is better than cure. Don't lose the track at all. Don't allow anything to drop anything on your life that will take you out of the path that God has set for you. Consider your destiny before you accept the visa. Consider your destiny before you go on that trip. Consider your destiny before you enter into what you call open door. Because most open doors are closed doors in disguise. Consider your destiny before you give in to that pleasure, to that man, to that woman, to that privilege. Consider your destiny before. In fact, consider your destiny before you give in to anger. It's not just pleasure, anger. Remember, we spoke about anger. Consider your destiny before you give in to anger. Because you can be so furious that you ruin your destiny. You do things that will destroy your destiny. In fact, consider your destiny before you answer to provocation. Consider your destiny before you make a decision to quit. Consider your destiny before you react to adversity. That was the lesson we learned from Job. Job considered his destiny. When the adversity came, the only option every believer has when the good God bring bad things is for them to abandon the good God. That was the only door left for Job. That was why his wife told him, curse God and die. And the man considered his destiny and said, should we accept only good from God without evil? He said, I know my redeemer lives. Even when my flesh is destroyed, even when I don't have the money back, 
when I will not have, even if I don't have my children back, if if I don't have my health back, if this body is destroyed, my eyes will see him. Consider your destiny before you respond to adversity. And listen, consider your destiny before you respond to advice. Before you follow that advice that, that that person is giving you. Before you follow those counsels from unsatisfied counselors. People that don't even know what God is doing with you are the one giving you counsel. People that don't even know what God is doing with your life are the one giving you counsel. They are your prayer partners. People that even when Jesus passed, they won't know he has passed. Are the one praying for you. What are they praying for? People that cannot demystify the scriptures are the one demystifying your dream. People who twist the Bible are the one giving meaning to your dream. Consider your destiny before you seek for dream interpretation. Consider your destiny before you give in to anything. Consider your destiny. Consider your destiny. Look at Jesus got to a point that adversity pressed him so much. He said, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass me. He now remembered his destiny. He now said, Not as I will. Not as I will. That means I'm willing to die this death. Because the Bible says he saw the glories ahead and he endured the cross. A people who consider their destiny will endure things. They will endure things. I will give you seven things that will endure quickly. Seven of the many things that will endure. People who consider their destiny will endure so many things. Number one, they will endure temptation. Oh yes, they will endure temptation. When temptation comes, they declare dry fasting. When they are tempted to go back to an old life, they declare fasting. They are the one who, they don't do 21 day fast in a day. They do fasting when the devil appears. They do fasting when the flesh show up. They won't tell you, I'm doing 21 days January and I eh. They are not into those religions. Their fasting is undetermined. In a year, they can fast for even 200 days out of the 365 days of the year because those were the days they faced the temptation. Those were the days that the enemy came to their doorstep. Those were the days that the flesh came. You cannot endure temptation. There's no grace to endure temptation. And where we tap the grace is through praying and fasting. Praying and fasting gives us the grace to endure temptation. So when you can if you consider your destiny, you go and fast and pray when temptation comes. So that you receive the grace from God to go through that temptation without falling. Number two, people who consider their destiny endure trials of faith. They will be mocked. They will be laughed at. They don't care. Their parents will reject them. I can't forget the man that was a Muslim that was rejected by his parents and they block all his account. A prince. He moved from plenty to zero in one day because he gave his life to Christ. And they drove him from the, from the house. He was even lucky that him, they drove him. There was one they came to kill. They served him food, poison that he should eat. His mother had to cry and come and sneak through the window and shouted on him, don't eat that food. Your father poisoned it to kill you. Because you accepted Jesus. And the man wept. You mean my father can even want me dead? Everything dark will remain at peace with you until you find light. Everything dark will remain at peace with you until you find light. Everything dark will remain at peace with you until you find light. Everything dark 
will remain at peace with you until you find Christ. Everything dark religion, dark church, dark practices will remain at peace with you. Dark traditions will remain at peace with you until you find Christ. The day you find Christ, war will be declared against you. You must endure the trials if you consider your destiny. People who consider their destiny endure trials. Number four, number three, people who consider their destiny walk away from wrong people. It doesn't matter what they are benefiting from. That's number three. They walk away from wrong people. It doesn't matter what they are benefiting from. Number five. Number four, I'm sorry. People who consider their destiny do not listen to the cravings of the flesh. Consider their destiny. Do not listen to the cravings of the flesh. The Bible says, He that sought to please the flesh shall the flesh do what? Reap corruption. So they don't sought to please the flesh because they, don't, they, will, they know that they will reap corruption. That corruption is going to come. It did not come today, it will come tomorrow. Because there is seed, time, then harvest. When you sow the seed, are you entering into a season of time? You would think that there will be no harvest. But you are in time. You have not hit harvest. There are three seasons. Sowing season, waiting season, and harvest season. So you have sown. There is no harvest yet because you are not waiting for it. But because you did not see the harvest, you think everything is right. But you are just in your waiting season. That is why when you begin to consider your destiny, and you begin to repent, God goes to the ground and kills the seed. So that it will never appear anything in your life. It is called forgiveness and mercy. The mercy of God goes to kill the seed. The mercy of God goes to kill the, the seed and cut up the harvest. He said, The sacrifice of God are a broken heart, a broken and a contrast spirit that will not despise, oh God. So long as you become broken for your sin and you turn away from it, you see the power of God will go to the ground, you sow it and kill it. It will speak into time and say, enough. My son, my daughter have repented. Stop processing this seed into a harvest. And time will say, yes, sir. Because you are the God of times and seasons. Not even if too weak if you understand this thing. You are the God of times and seasons. Since you are my God, I will say no yes to what you say yes to. God kills seeds after we have repented. Kill the seed completely and give us the cross to go back to the path. For some of us, the cross could be daily fasting. Fasting every day of your life. 6 to 2, 6 to 12, 6 to 3, 6 to 6. Until you are back on track. To some, the cross will be don't attend any social function in your life because it was a social function that sank you down. To solve the cross could be have no friend. Stay disconnected from friends because friends ruin you. Stay away from friends until you recover. When you now recover and get back to your path, God will give you fresh friends that align with the pathway you are back to. Your cross is defined by what crushed you. Your cross is defined by what crushed you. So if you check if you, if you check what crushed you and know what you did and how it came, you can get a revelation of what to keep doing for you to get back on track. That thing that you must keep doing is called the cross because it's not cheap to keep doing it. For some, it could be every 3 a.m. You have to wake up and pray and cry unto God. And every day of your life, you have to stay fasting until 3 p.m. for God to break those things in your life. For some, it could be you have to do it for five years, three years, seven years, for a long time. And because you are under grace, 
do not resort to any health problems because you are pursuing something. But one revelation you will need to get back on track is how your old cross look like. Is someone hearing me? How your old cross look like? That's what you must look at. If you consider your destiny, you walk away from the wrong people. If you consider your destiny, you will not follow the cravings of the flesh. Because the cross is to silence the cravings of the flesh. The cross is to neutralize them and give you power over the grave. When you have power over the grave, you will not submit to the grave again. You will tell the grave no. Because the cross has helped you to have power over the grave. So one thing you must get from God today, Lord, show me my cross. Very important. That should be part of your prayer. Lord, show me the cross I need to bear in life so that I will not lose you. Look at what Jesus said. We say, if I will come after me, after he have lost their, his way. Look at what the Bible says. All we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone to his own side. Is that not? Now, for us to get back to his own side, because we have gone to our own side, for us to get back to his own side, the Matthew 16 must be implemented. Open your Bibles quickly. And mark this scripture. Make it a star scripture. Matthew 16. For us to get back to his own part. To throw away that lifestyle. The lifestyle of sexual immorality. The lifestyle of lying. The lifestyle of spiritual laziness. The lifestyle of having no time for God. The lifestyle of, of, of going everywhere attending every party the lifestyle that is anti-God for us to throw it we must receive the cross look at what the Bible says in Matthew 16 verse 17 okay verse 24 then Jesus said to his disciples everyone read it if anyone desires to come after me read that place one more time if anyone I didn't hear you read one more time in everyone look up if you can see this board on the screen or whatever look up We have left the party. We, we walk and we got here. And a pleasure, a prosperity, or a crave we responded to took us here. But this is where we're supposed to be going. And Jesus now met us here. Now read that place again. If anyone desires to do what? So Jesus met all of us here and preached to us using his servant and say you have lost your way at the end of the message some people begin to desire to come up because they ask him if I have lost the way where is the way and I say I am the way so follow me I am the way now he now say if anyone desire to follow him if anyone desire to come after him he's going to lead that one back to this spot but how will he lead the person look at the next statement he must do what deny himself do you see there talking about self-denial <laughs> you must stop being selfish you must tell the flesh I have given you all you want from today the 4th of February I will stop giving you all you want. Everybody will give their flesh all it wants. Will not last on earth. This flesh is called the body of death. That's a bit, that, do you, are you understanding me? Open your ears. And open your eyes. This flesh is called what? You, 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 you are, I, I know you can't talk now. Talk, touch your body like this. Say this is my body. It is called in Bible language the body of death. Look at the implication. That means whatever cancer it gives us will kill us. Do you get the message now? Whatever craving it initiates will kill us. That's how Jesus said you can't get back on track until you start denying the flesh, whatever it asks you. After all, you 
lost track because you were given it all it asks you 